Hello guys, so in my last two episodes I've first shown you how you can salvage old washing machine motors and possibly coming with their own transmission and belt drives. And then we took a look inside one of these motors and I have talked about the different modes of operation, the pin out, how you can find that out, etc. And in this episode we're now going to take a look at the mechanical side of things and see how we can connect the motors to actual mechanical devices. And what I want to build in this video is a small drivetrain for a robot. It will first be remote controlled but later I think we can give it some autonomy. But, well, the biggest problem here is that the pulleys that come with the washing machine motors are very large in diameter and they are, for example, too large for the kind of wheels that I want to use for my robot. So that is why we'll have to find another solution, another kind of pulley that we can attach to these wheels. And, well, also build a frame, attach the motors to the frame and so on and that is what I'm going to show you in this video. So the wheels that I have chosen are these hand truck wheels here with a diameter of around 26 centimeters and they can be bought for around 10 euros or so in your average home improvement store. One thing though that is a little special about these particular wheels here is that the rims of these wheels are held together by bolts and why that is practical well you'll just see in a minute. So I unscrew those bolts and here I have a 125 millimeter caster replacement wheel just an ordinary plastic wheel that can be bought for two or three bucks online. And the first thing that I do with it is to remove its bearing because otherwise it wouldn't fit on a 20 millimeter axle, which is the inner diameter of the hand truck wheels. Now I'm centering this outer part of the hand truck wheels rim onto this caster wheel and I mark these spots where the bolts are sitting. And now I'm drilling holes through the caster wheel and the short bolts that were used here before are put aside and instead I'm using 80 millimeter M6 bolts. And I attach them to the rims, putting the wheels back together. And by the way, I'm using Loctite for all nuts that are used in this project. You could also use self-tightening nuts, the ones with the little plastic rings in them. And I'm using a pair of nuts as jam nuts and this is where the caster wheel is placed and it's then fastened with another set of washers and nuts from the top side again adding some Loctite. And if you don't feel too comfortable with using just four bolts, there would be enough space even on the small wheel for eight of them. And if you can't find any hand truck wheels that have these holes for the bolts, then you can just drill some of them inside. It helps to have a drill press though. So even though you can see that both wheels are still a little bit out of center and need to be balanced somewhat, you can see that this is working quite well even though the motor is just sitting on the bench loosely, no pressure on the belt and it seems to self-center itself quite well. But of course we need a rugged frame that will hold the motor in place firmly and that will possibly even allow us to adjust the belt tension later. And for that I am now cutting off a piece off of this 20mm steel rod here and if you can afford it buy stainless. I'm using ordinary construction steel for now but might later have to replace this part actually. The next thing that I need is square tubes. And what I have here is a 30 times 3 millimeter material and I'm cutting off sections of that as well. And here you can see what the first part should look like that I want to weld together. But first this steel tube section here is pre-drilled and bored to 20 millimeters and this rod that will act as an axle is inserted and now I'm welding it in place and I'm also welding the different tube sections together as well. But well, before I can go on with the frame I have to make some modifications of the housings of the motors themselves. The thing is they already come with some kind of protruding elements that can be used to fasten the motors and adjust the belt tension but these motors are not symmetrical. But I want to use some of them in a symmetrical fashion in this project and that is why I'm cutting off some of the protruding aluminium parts that I will no longer need. 
And after that I'm cutting off some pieces of steel angle plate. I grind them and drill some holes. I also drill two holes in each of the housings of the two motors. And then I bolt it all together. And now I could install these motors in an upright fashion like this onto the frame. So here I have the two steel frame parts for the left and right side holding the wheels including the pulleys together with the motors. And I made these two parts first because at first I wasn't sure how I would design the entire frame. But from this point on I really just wanted to get this thing on the road as quickly as possible in order to see if it would even work at all. And that is why I'm going to make some temporary simplifications here so that we can have a real test at the end of this video here today. So the next step then was to connect the left and right section of the frame together. For that I needed some more steel tubing. I cut that to length, ground off the edges and welded everything in place. And now of course it would be time to install some kind of steering system for the front wheel or wheels. Most robots these days have three wheels, but you could have four if you use something like Ackerman steering, similar to what is done in cars. But I don't have the time for that today and that is the reason why I will temporarily just install the two front wheels on fixed axles so that we can see this thing driving and so that I can make some load tests in a couple of days. So you know in order to see if the motors are strong enough, if the belts are sitting tightly enough on the pulleys and so on, that's really the task for today. Steering will be an issue for another day and another episode. So with the frame completed so far and the two temporary front axles installed for now, I could now put the wheels onto the axles. And by the way, they are secured by ordinary split pins as you can see here. And in the next step, I would now actually build a mechanism that would allow me to adjust the tension on the belts. But the steel that I have ordered for that is not yet here. And that is why I'm also temporarily welding the motors in place onto the frame. But I will remove these welds again in a week or so. But for now, that has allowed me to also install the belts connecting the motors with the pulleys on the wheels and we're almost ready for a test now. The only thing missing is to wire everything up. Now the thing is that in the last episode I've shown you that these motors even though built for AC can also be powered by DC. If you don't understand why then maybe watch my last episode you can find it in the video description. You will see right now that I'm using a long cable or wire to power this thing and it looks just like an ordinary power cord. But understand that I'm not using the line voltage here. I'm using the power cord to connect this contraption here to my lab power supply. In the future the robot will be powered by batteries of course. For example these lead acid batteries here could be used. Depending on how you connect them, we could for example use them for a 24 volt rail or for a 48 volt rail. But we could also use power electronics like inverters or switching converters to step up that voltage significantly so that we could use the motors at higher power and that will be discussed in future episodes. But for now it's really just about the drivetrain, the power of the motors and the belts and how they convey the power to the wheels. So let's just dive right into it and take a look at some real world tests.
So for now, I'm really happy to tell you that this seems to work just fine actually. And in the coming days, I will perform some load tests with this platform and see how the motors will react to a lot of weight being put on the frame. And well, likewise, what the belts will do if they will slip too much on the pulleys, for example, even though that doesn't really seem to be a problem right now. And as I implied in this video, there are lots of topics that we will talk about in future videos, the steering system and other mechanical and metalworking projects, the tightening of the belts and then also lots of interesting electronics projects like for example measuring the motor speed controlling the motors with microcontrollers and for example stepping up the supply voltage with switching converters so this will lead me back to all my favorite topics really and I've already put a lot of work into a tutorial that I'm working on it's a tutorial about DC motor control with different kinds of sensors and microcontrollers like for example the Arduino and we will also apply that knowledge to washing machine motors so it will really give me a great opportunity to demonstrate practical problems and make also theoretical tutorials about their solution. So if you like this video and like my ideas for the future of this channel, then please consider supporting it and visit patreon.com slash TPAI. See you soon.